All right, let's make some Christmas magic with Ashley. Oh my gosh, you guys remember the la la? Hello and welcome, I'm Ashley and oh my gosh, if I don't look like Christmas, y'all. Mm. So today I'm gonna be doing a walk through, talk through, quite in depth tutorial of this makeup look. It has all of my favorite things that you get in a traditional Christmas look, but it has my little bit of spin on it. So, you know, the traditional, you know, kind of check marks that we're, we're hitting here are gonna be the glittery gold eye that we've got going on, as well as this berry red lip. The things that kind of make it mine, I like to do a nice like little statement wing, as you can see here. I'm gonna go very in depth on how I do my statement wing, as well as how I get this very like bright open eye. I have very small eyes, so if you too have small eyes or you just maybe want your eyes to look a little bit bigger, even if they're not necessarily small I'm gonna walk through how I do this look it gives me a very nice open bright eye which I absolutely love when I'm going with a bold lip so I mean honestly this look has just brought me all the joy I'm also gonna talk a little bit about how I like to balance my cheeks when I do a holiday look like this or any look where I'm doing kind of like a bold lip as well as like a little bit of a more dramatic eye than I normally would do so we're gonna be going over several little tips and tricks that I have. We're also gonna hit on some like dry skin makeup tips for the winter. So there's a lot of goodies in this Christmas, traditional kind of Christmas makeup look that you can use, not for Christmas, You whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate, you can use this look. Before we get into the tutorial, if you will give this video a thumbs up, it's completely free and it really helps out my channel. I appreciate it oh so much. All right, let's make some Christmas magic. So this is my battle wound where my daughter scratched me in her sleep, <laughs> poor thing. Honestly, it didn't look this bad the first day and this is like the third day I've had it and it just, it's looked worse every day. So hopefully it's gonna heal. I don't think I realized how deep it was. Yikes. Like I said, so we're going from base all the way through. Like we're not skipping any steps today. So I'm starting off by putting on a little bit of lip balm. This is the Milk Makeup Kush Lip Balm in the shade Nug. This has been my favorite lip balm lately because it's really hydrating. It feels really nice on the lips. And it's, you know, a light enough of a formula that I can put lip products on top of it. I don't feel like I have to wipe it off first. So I've been really enjoying using this as my everyday lip balm. To prep my skin, I'm gonna have a couple steps because it's winter, so my skin is extra dry. So I'm gonna be using the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Refining Serum. I spoke of this in my most recent favorites video because I really just love the way that it helps minimize my pores along my nose area. Next, I'm gonna use Charlotte's Magic Cream Moisturizer. This is a good, heavy moisturizer. I love this, it's so rich. I love it for when my skin feels a little drier, like days like today, just to put some extra glow in there. I want a really nice candle lit from within kind of glow. So I'm going to mix the Rodeal Instant Glow Primer with my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. I love this combination because it's a great mix of hydrating and illuminating. Some illuminating primers are not as hydrating as I would like them to be, but I really want that like gorgeous just illumination that I get from the Rodeal, but the Armani Luminous Silk has just the best hydrating primer. It's one of my favorite hydrating primers at this point. All right, another November favorite in action. This is the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. I wear the shade 2N1 Cashew. I love this foundation. It is such a beautiful lip from within foundation. I just find that it gives me the perfect glow. It is really, truly very radiant, very luminous, but in such a soft and understated way. I, I just... I feel like I could never do justice to how much I appreciate this foundation and how beautiful I think it looks. As nice as it may look on camera, it is five times more beautiful and naturally finished in person. I dot it all over my skin and then I buff it in with one of my favorite foundation brushes. This is from It Cosmetics. You can use any kind of rounded top foundation brush would work. 
I tend to get like some odd redness right along kind of the jaw. So sometimes I like to put a little bit extra there. And when I talk about buffing, sometimes I'll kind of like tap and then almost like leave the brush in place. Like keep it on the skin as I kind of do like little circle motions. That's what I'm talking about when I say buffing. So you'll see I kind of do a tap, like a tap, 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 and then a buff. The brush never really leaves the skin when I'm doing the buffing portion. And this is a foundation that I have found looks really good when you take the time to really buff it into the skin. It really needs that to kind of warm up and meld. I think most foundations are that way, but this one especially, if I don't take the time to really work it into my skin, I don't get as great a finish as I have come to expect from this foundation. I'm also just gonna take a minute to kind of buff in around my hairline just because since I do use self tanner, yes, I am still this pale while self tanned. I do like to just take an extra moment to kind of buff into my hairline. Sometimes I forget, it's okay if you forget. Sometimes I do. You'll see in some videos, my scalp is markedly a different color than my face. It happens. All right, I'm gonna do my brows next. I'm using the same two brow products I just use every single time. It's the Dior Brow Styler, as well as the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. These are just, I mean, they're my favorite brow products and I don't stray from them really because I feel like brow products are maybe the one thing that once I find ones that really work for me, I just, I, I mean, I don't even care to try other ones. I'm like, I'm happy. Why would I, why would I switch it up? <laughs> Brows are done and I have prepped my lids with a little bit of concealer and some translucent setting powder. And we're gonna dig in to the palette we're using today. So today I'm gonna be using the Lawless Little One palette because I feel like this is such, these are just like classic neutrals, okay? See this? Very classic neutral shades. You can dupe these with basically anything. Like these are very dupable shades. So even if you don't have this palette, it's not really a big deal. So I'm going to take that lightest shade first, the lightest shade here in the corner, and I'm going to put that all over my lid and my brow bone. I'm basically doing the same thing I just did with powder, but it's okay. The next shade I'm using is right here. This is just a good, again, like a mid-tone kind of sandy neutral shade. There's nothing really spectacular or super like unique about it. So you should have a shade like this. I pick this up on my big fluffy brush. I take the brush at an angle, lean my head back a little bit, and I get it right on the edge of the orbital bone. So for me, this is the best way to do my transition shades because it keeps the color off of my lid, which if you're someone like me who has smaller eyes and wants your eyes to look more open, this is going to help you because you're keeping this shade off the lid and leaving all of your lid space to be used for brighter shades, sparkly shades. You know, you can do matte if you want to, but it's just gonna keep the darker shades off the lid so that you can reserve that lid space. Now you'll see that I kept this in the crease. I went from inner corner all the way to the outer corner, but I didn't get anything on the lid really. My lid is still pretty much reserved as well as the outer corner. You can see right here, the little bitty outer corner that I do have of my eye of my lid doesn't have that shade on it, which is how I want to keep it. I want to keep that clean just because I'm going to be doing a statement wing because I love a statement wing. <sighs> So I'm going to go in with a more condensed tapered blending brush. I'm going to take that next shade right next to it. This is like an espresso color. Again, this is such a run of the mill color. You definitely probably most likely if you have, you know, some makeup, you probably have a shade like this. So you don't have to use this one. You can use any kind of deep brown and I take barely, I mean, I just get like the lightest little coating definitely tap off because I don't want a ton of this because this is just going to go in the little bit outer part of my crease, I'm gonna apply it with the same technique that I just used where I lean my head back, take the brush at more of like an upward angle, almost a 45 degree angle, and I'm gonna blend it along that orbital bone. But I'm only going in the outer corner for this. So I literally want the smallest amount of product and I kind of place it there. And then I immediately go in with my last blending brush and start blending it there. Cause I want just barely a little bit more definition 
in that crease, but I don't want it to come down onto my lid. I don't want to erase that blank space that I've left for myself, and I don't want to take it too far in. I also don't want it to look, you know, too choppy, too much of a line. So I'll blend it in the outer corner until it's almost gone, and then I'll start pulling towards the inner corner just so that I don't have any kind of noticeable line. I just want to give myself that tiny extra bit of definition. So I'm gonna take a flat synthetic brush and I'm gonna go back into that very lightest shade. Whatever is like a good skin tone shade for you, that's what you're gonna to wanna to use here. And I'm going to top this all over my lid. So all over the mobile lid, as I have heard it called. You know, it's interesting. I always hear mobile lid more often from like Australian creators and Canadian ones. I don't hear that word a lot from America. Maybe it's just the Americans I watch. I don't know. So just following my natural mobile lid to put this light shade on. We're going to go over this with a sparkly shade here in a minute. So I just want to kind of make sure that I've cleaned up anything that might have fallen down. So you can see the eyes looking very open, looking much bigger than my eyes normally look. Now I'm going to go into this light kind of champagne gold shade that is in this little one palette. Again, what I love about this palette and why I chose it today is because these are shades that you most likely have. You don't have to, to buy this particular palette. So I'm gonna pick that up on my same synthetic flat shader brush and I'm gonna pack it everywhere that I just packed that skin tone shadow. Ooh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Okay. You guys, one time, I just want to throw in an anecdote. One time I was on a Kate the Great live stream. Okay, bingo. If you're playing at home, I just mentioned my friend Kate. <laughs> so I was on Kate's live stream and someone was mentioning one of my videos and they're like, yeah, and she has a great voice. And they meant like my speaking voice. And Kate was like, Ashley sings? I was like, Ashley does not sing. <laughs> no. I mean, I do. But I sing like in the Proverbs way, like sing like no one's listening. That's how I sing. I would love to be a great singer. I really wish that was a talent I would have been born with, but alas, I was not. That doesn't stop me though. You should still sing. You don't have to be good at things to enjoy them. I mean, seriously, look how big my eyes look. My eyes look like normal people eyes instead of little munchkin eyes <laughs> like I normally have. It is now time for the shadow wing. I'm gonna break this down for you a little bit more than I normally do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my favorite angled liner brush. This is the number 10 brush from Hourglass. I'm gonna spritz it with just a touch of the Always an Optimist setting spray from Rare Beauty. You can use whatever spray you like. You could use Fix Plus would be a good one. Uh, anything that has like that little bit of kind of a glycerin feel to it. Okay, so for a statement liner or an accent liner, whatever you wanna call it, accent wing, statement wing, you can use whatever shade you like. Today, I want to go in and I wanna use like a really cool one from the Pat McGrath Sublime palette. This is the Mothership 2 Sublime. I wanna use this really cool shade right here. You can see this has like a green, gold, black, blue shift to it. It's just so cool. Has such an amazing shift going on and sparkle, hello. So I think it'd be very just interesting and different. And I love that green, but I also love having the interesting shifts to it. So that's the one I'm gonna to use today. You can use any shadow from any palette. You could use a gel liner if that's your thing. But for me, I like a shadow liner. It's just what I'm most comfortable with. So that's what I'm gonna do. I take whatever sponge I'm using today. I just happen to have a beauty blender. I tilt my head back a little bit like this, chin up. I'm gonna take my sponge and pull over and up, kind of in the direction that I want my wing. I like my wings to follow like this angle of my eye. My eye's a little upturned, so my natural eye line right here goes like up kind of sharply. Um, let me find something to show you that. See, if I put this along my lower line, you can see the angle right there is a little bit sharp. See that? because I have upturned eyes. My eyes upturn a little bit. So you can either follow the direct line of your eye or if you wanna angle it up a little bit more, you can do so as well. I like to follow my natural line because it is more upturned. I love that about my eyes. I like to accentuate that. So that's what I go with. All right, so I put the sponge here. I pull up just a tiny bit, pull my skin taut in the direction of the line. So we're kind of pulling 
whoop, the same way we want the line to go. Close my eye, and what I do is I just kind of look right here. This is where my lash line goes. So I kind of go follow that, close, and I just do my first line. I pull it about a quarter of the way into my lash line and kind of then taper it down into the lash line. I never, hardly ever pull my wings all the way in. I like for them to stop around like maybe where the outside of my pupil is or sometimes the inside, it just depends. Today I'm gonna go for the outside because I really wanna be sparkly and very open on the inside. So what I like to do first is clean this up, kind of get this part of it exactly where I want it. It tapers down and kind of disappears into the lash line. I will maybe like push my brush into the lash line there right where it ends and that'll be the end here. Now, this is not as sharp as I want it, but the line is exactly where I want it. It just takes practice, that's the truth of it. But for me, this is the easiest way to do it. Doing like a dot, that whole system, it just doesn't work for me. More power to you if it works for you, but this is what I have found works for me. So again, pulling taut, and then to clean it up, I just make sure that I have kind of the angle in the proper way. You want the angle, you can see on an angled brush, you want it to be hugging your face properly. So the end that is longer is gonna be to the outside. Slowly, milliliter by milliliter, sharpen that up by going a little bit further until it's about the sharpness I want. I love the shift of this liner. It's just so interesting and it looks so nice. So I'm like ecstatic about how this turned out. So it's so funny because I have been eyeing this shade for this specific purpose because I don't use a ton of like really colorful bold shades. And when I do, I almost always use them this way because it's just a way to like add color that also feels comfortable for me and kind of the way I like to do my makeup. So I'm just ecstatic about this. All right, let's go in with a little bit of concealer before we do the lower lash line. So I'm just taking a little bit of the Benefit Boing Concealer. I've been loving doing this technique where you go just a little bit on the inside, a little bit on the corner, and then you kind of marry the two together. That's been kind of helping me cut down on how much concealer I put under my eyes. <laughs> so I like to go in first with a brush to kind of get the shape of under eye concealer I want. Kind of like tap it. This Boing Benefit Boing Concealer is really easy to blend. It spreads really well. I appreciate that a lot. I have found that that's one big thing I like about concealer. I like concealer that spreads out well. I have really, after trying so much makeup this year, I have really just seen, you know, what it is that I like and what it is that I don't like. And one of the things I really don't like is a concealer that doesn't want to spread out for you, that you kind of have to like, you know, tug with or, you don't have a lot of time to work with it. That's a little bit of a pain. So it's interesting to kind of see what it is that I really value in makeup and in concealer. I like a nice spreadable consistency, almost like spreadable butter. I can't believe it's not butter, if you will. I'm gonna go ahead and lighten up the center of my face while I'm here and just, I hope that that's gonna help with <laughs> this little battle scar I've got going on because oh my gosh, what the hey. Now in the winter, one thing that I really feel like I always have to do just because my skin is a little bit drier is I'll take whatever sponge I'm using, spray a little bit of, you know, kind of like a Fix Plus type spray. I've been using the Rare Beauty one, I really like it. It's very similar in function to Fix Plus. I just want something that has like a little bit of a, like a glycerin-ish kind of deal to it and I will then go in I really like make sure that it's not too much you have you just need barely and go over everywhere that I put concealer so that it will melt in and not dry out on me because even the creamiest of concealers in the winter with just how dehydrated my skin gets because of the lack of humidity in the air because I live on the east coast so I'm used to there being like humidity most of the year and when the humidity goes away my skin gets very sad. So going back over my concealer with a little bit of a damp sponge, even when I'm using a brush, really helps. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and set my under eyes with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Oh, words cannot express how much I love this powder. Now for my lower lash line, I'm gonna take a flat like definer brush, any kind of like synthetic flat brush is gonna work here. And I am going to take that darkest shade that I used from the little one palette or whatever the darker shade was that you used to kind of deepen up your crease. That's what I'm gonna take. And I'm gonna go from the outer corner and I'm gonna take it right to where the colored part of my eye starts where the iris starts. If I'm looking straight on, that's where I want it to go, from outer corner right to wherever it is my iris starts. I can't see it when I'm looking at you, so I just wanted to show you though. So I'm gonna pat it right along there. That's really like maybe like the first outer third of my eye. I want it to hug the eye, so I kind of have to be a little mindful to get it to hug up to that corner rather than kind of going off of the corner. So then I'm just gonna take a pencil brush and I'm gonna blend this all the way through, stopping where the inner part of my iris ends. So the inner colored part right here, that's where we're stopping with our blending. I move my head when I do this and I open my mouth. It's impossible not to. <laughs> when I do a look like this where I want my eyes to look really open, I like to use the darkest shade generally. I wouldn't use the liner shade, but I would use like the darkest, the darkest shade that's in the skin tone family. So like a brown is in the skin tone family. It's deeper than my skin tone, but it's still a skin toned shade. I like to use whatever the darkest skin tone shade I used was to kind of go in, define, and then I blend that out because it's gonna define the lower lash line, make these lashes look you know, fuller on the lower lash line, but I'm leaving my waterline open so that I can then go in with something brighter. It's gonna keep my eye open, but also defined. That's kind of what I'm always trying to balance with a look like this. And most of my looks, I really like my eyes to look open, but also kind of defined. and upturned. I really like to accentuate that. So it's kind of a little bit of a balancing act. I'm going to use the Marc Jacobs in the buff. This is one of my favorite eyeliners of all time. It's just a nice shimmery champagne shade. You could leave the eyes right here, throw on some lower lash mascara and be done. I do wanna add a little bit more shimmer. So I'm gonna go in with a Super Shock Shadow from ColourPop. I just discovered these recently. I was like the last one on board and now I'm obsessed. This is the shade Catitude. It's just a really nice kind of like shimmery champagne shade. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be using this. These are so light reflective and beautiful. I know a lot of people use their fingers. I've said it before, I'll say it again. My lids are small. My fingers for some reason act really clunky when I try <laughs> to use them to put on shadow. So I'm gonna go in with just a synthetic shader brush, the same brush I used earlier on the lid. Pick up a little bit of the shade Catitude and I'm gonna pack that all over where I have the gold showing. I'm kind of gonna go a little bit here into the inner corner just to like brighten it up. And I'm probably gonna go about, mm, yeah, right there is good. That looks good to me. So I went almost all the way over, but not quite, because I don't wanna mess up my liner, but I like to do my shimmer last because I don't want anything to get on the shimmer. So that looks really nice to me, actually. I'm, I'm loving it. All right, look at this. Hi, look at that shimmer. In love, I'm gonna throw on some lower lash mascara and then we're gonna move on to the rest of the face. So for cheeks today, I went in with the Fenty Glow Cheeks Out Cream Blush. This is such a good like nude rose shade. I absolutely love how neutral this kind of is. If you're someone who ever like, you, you're doing like a bold lip, you're doing a bright eye or something and you're like, you know what, I want a flush to my cheeks but I don't want too much, I'm not really sure which way to go. This is a really good shade for that because it's just, 
it adds color back into your cheeks. Someone like me, as fair as I am, I absolutely cannot put on foundation and then not put color back in my cheeks. I will look dead. So, so this is a really good blush for when I just want to add a little bit of color back in, but I don't want anything that's really going to distract from the eyes or the cheeks or anything like that. So I love this blush. I tried it the first time in my first impressions video that I did last month. This comes in the Fenty Glow Trio. It, it honestly is worth it. Like that trio is worth it just for this blush. I don't own any cream shades like this and it's so beautiful. I really don't want bronzer per se with this look. I'm gonna take a little bit of it though. Um, I'm gonna be using the bronzer from the Sculpture Unlocked, the Mini Sculpture Unlocked palette. I absolutely love this palette. I'm actually gonna take like an angled blush brush and I'm gonna pick that up and I'm just gonna get like right around the hollows of my cheek, like the outer edge basically. I'm not gonna pull this down too much. I don't really wanna use it to bronze really very much at all, if any. It's more of like, I'm using it like a contour bronzer, like a bronzer today. Just kind of getting up there in the hollow of my cheek where I naturally have a shadow. You can see on this side, I haven't done it yet, but there, my shadow's there already because I have high cheekbones. Thank you, Jesus, for that. I appreciate it. So just getting in there. If you don't have high cheekbones, you don't naturally have that thing you can kind of suck in and go with that. But for me, I have it there, so I just kind of follow it. And again, just keeping it to the outside, not pulling it down at all, because I want to keep this look very lifted in line with this liner. I just want everything to kind of lift upward and be just very, I don't know, this is like, I think I'm just going for like really like refined today. All right, I'm gonna go in with highlighter. Just taking like a, I think this is a setting brush from Real Techniques, and I'm gonna use the highlighter that's in the Mini Sculpture Unlocked palette. Highlight along those cheekbones, and I'll also go ahead and get my nose as well as this little, I kinda do a T. I don't know, it's just what works for me. And I'll also get right here and right here. I love this, I love this quad so much. It's just so nice. I'm so glad that I got it. I, I'm glad that I got the mini and not the full size. The mini, I just, I, I keep reaching for it. I reach for it time and time again. It's so beautiful. And that highlight is just, I mean, like I said, I wanted lit from within. I wanted open eyes. We've got it. We've got it. And now it's time for lips. So you could go for a red if you're more into that. I'm gonna go for like what I consider a berry. I talked about this in my best berry lipsticks video I recently did. This is the shade Power. It's just a good like nice raspberry berry. I'm a big fan. It is matte, which I don't always go for, but I don't know, something about this holiday look. I got a lot of shimmer going on in the eyes. I just am gonna go for it. This is also a very comfortable formula. This Laura Mercier Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick is a very comfortable formula. And I love that it's a crayon because you can draw it on. It's just very user friendly. So even if you're someone who like, if you're someone like me that like, you're more drawn to satins, occasionally you go for a matte, this is a really good one uh, to dip your toe in with because it's just a really nice, comfortable formula. And again, the application is so easy. This is the finished look. Hello, I am in love. We have all the things that I love most about Christmas here. The gold shimmer on the eyes. The eyes look bigger. They look open, but also lifted. This berry lip, hello. And honestly, this Fenty Glow, man. That Fenty Glow cheek color is so perfect for a look like this because it just keeps everything in balance. I feel like if I went red or berry on the cheeks, it would just be a touch over what I want for this look. But no, this is balanced, this is perfect. This is like, this is my holiday look. I have found it. This is what I'm gonna be wearing in our Christmas pictures. I'm absolutely in love with it. I mean, this is just, this is top notch. I think this might be my favorite tutorial I have ever done on my channel. I'm I'm in love. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions about this look, please let me know in the questions below, in the questions below, in the comments below. Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any other questions, sure, throw them in there. I thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me. 
whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you celebrate, whatever you don't celebrate, I just hope that you're having the hap hap happiest season that you could have. And I hope so much to see you in my next video. Until then, you can always chat with me in the comments and I just, I mean it, I say it every time. Please, please, please take care of yourself, okay? Bye.